fake LinkedIn jobs giving you malware, Google Chrome stealing your passwords, and the fact that your phone has been spying on you this whole time. And all this and more coming up in this month's cybersecurity news update. Your passwords may have just been stolen if you use Google Chrome. Oh, I have a bad feeling about this. As there is a brand new attack circulating where hackers trap users unknowingly into handing over their passwords. Well, how do they do this? By exploiting a feature in the Google Chrome browser known as kiosk mode which locks the device to a single page only mode. So you can imagine returning to your computer only to find your browser locked, displaying only a Google login page with the escape key and function 11 keys disabled. Now, it's a Google login page, you think. Maybe it's a new update. However, in entering your password to unlock the browser, you're actually handing your credentials over straight to the hackers. With the passwords, they can then also steal any other passwords saved to your browser. If you find yourself in this situation, try using Alt F4 or Shift Escape to close the browser and make sure that your antivirus is up to date because you weren't and your grandma was right. It wasn't a myth after all, according to this leak, because if true, your phone has been stalking you this whole time. I knew it. As CMG, which is a marketing partner of companies like Facebook, Amazon, and Google, had a presentation leak revealing their active listening software. <laughs> what is it? It's apparently an AI which listens through your device's microphone to collect and analyze conversations, thereby providing real-time data straight to advertisers. The tech giants have denied any involvement, and Google Chrome has since removed CMG from their partner's program. With data security expert Andy Locatio weighing in, saying when a new app download or updates prompts users with the, you know, usual 20 page long user license agreement, active listening is often included. So really, it's your fault. I'm just kidding, it's shady as hell. But because of it, it's entirely legal. It's also unclear whether the eavesdropping is constant or just during specific times when the phone mic should be activated, like a call for example. And with companies denying it, it might not be true. But it really doesn't seem that way. And that's not the only thing that isn't as it seems. As if you thought the job market was bad, well, it's much worse than you think. As the notorious North Korean cyber threat group Lazarus is targeting software developers with fake coding tests as far back as late 2023. Posing as recruiters and even reputable companies like Capital One on sites like LinkedIn to gain people's trust. They offer attractive job opportunities. Hi, Dad. I just died on your arms tonight. And as part of the interview process, sends time sensitive coding assessments laced with malicious Python packages. Once you run these so called tests, malware infects your system. And the time limited aspect is important here, as can be seen in this example where devs were tasked to create a password manager and fix some bugs in the code in just 30 minutes. This sense of urgency, typically used in other social engineering attacks like phishing emails, for example, led developers to lower their guard and not check the packages for any maliciousness before running it. I don't really think that's a word, but we'll go with it. So if you're a dev, be cautious of any unsolicited job offers and verify the authenticity of coding tests before running anything, because you're not as safe as you think. As cybersecurity giant Fortinet, known for their firewalls and security solutions, confirmed they just got breached. FBI! This just happened to coincide with a massive leak of 440 gigabytes of data from Fortinet's SharePoint site. After which, the hacker then shared the credentials online from the alleged S3 bucket where the stolen data was stored, allowing other threat actors to download the stolen information. The company says that the breach only affected a limited number of files related to a small number of users in the Asia Pacific region, whom have already apparently been notified, with Fortinet saying that none of their operations, products, and services have been affected, whilst the threat actor calling himself 40 <laughs> alleges that they tried to extort Fortinet but were refused, which is why they leaked the data online. However, it's not confirmed whether the leaks data is from that particular breach, so I don't know. So thank you very much for tuning into this month's episode of The Cyber Expanse. Please like, subscribe, and don't forget to drop a comment if there's anything you'd like to see next episode. Bye now.